to Edinburgh Television. I'm Sierra Holman. And I'm Taylor Buffington, and this is your weekly news update. Our top story first broke on Erie News Station WICU 12. Edinburgh University Vice President for, Advan for Advancement, Tina Mangine, has not returned to work since she was escorted out of her office located in the alumni house on February 12th. According to university spokesperson Jeff Hillman, Minjean's office is being overseen by university president Julie Wallman on an interim basis. There is no word on what prompted this leave or when Minjean might return to campus. Minjean's resume includes serving as chief of staff to former Erie Mayor Rick Filippi. She later ran Erie County Executive Kathy Dahl Kemper's 2008 congressional campaign and served as her chief of staff in Washington, D.C. from 2009 to 2011. According to WICU, Minjean is fighting a suspension, but that has not been confirmed. For the most up-to-date information, visit borougheonline.com. The Department of Residence Life and Housing has had changes in store for students as the registration process began. Tracy Geibel has more on this story. Residence Life and Housing did have some changes to announce. Students can now room with the opposite sex, Highlands 2 is designated as a freshman building, and the living learning floor options are updated. Beginning on Monday, March 2nd, students could reserve their current room. Wednesday, displaced students could choose an available room, and Friday the remainder could do so. Director of Residence Life and Housing, Amy Franklin Craft, spoke more about this. We have a, a new program going into Highlands 2 um, for first year students specifically, and we have some other living learning programs that we want to ensure um, that the student populations in the programs really match or align with the majors that they're intended to serve so that they're receiving the best educational experience that they can. Junior Casey Cribs expressed her opinion regarding the freshman dorm. I have mixed opinions. I feel like it'll be a good thing for the incoming freshmen to like get to know one, about one another, but then again, I also feel like it's going to be a bad idea because you don't get that sense of like bond. Like my roommate, my roommates are freshmen and I kind of like showed them the ropes. And junior Shelby Gray also commented about this. And when I was a freshman, I didn't get to meet a lot of new people because I was around a lot of people that are upperclassmen and they already had their groups of friends. While students like Cribs and Gray disliked the idea of gender flexible dorm rooms, Franklin Craft explained the reasoning behind this decision. We want to offer students the ability to feel safe and accepted within the residential community. And for some students, that's about living with an individual whose maybe biological sex assignment is different. For more information, you can visit our YouTube channel. I'm Tracy Geibel with ETV. Thursday, February 26, the Alani Awards recognized about 70 multicultural students for their academic achievements during the fall 2014 semester. Each semester, these awards have recognized African American, Latino, Asian American, and international students for over 10 years. Students with, the, with GPAs from 2.7 to 4.0 from multicultural backgrounds were eligible for the awards which were given out based on GPA A 2.7, GPA earned a, brown, a bronze award, A 3.0 silver award, 3.5 gold award, and those with 4.0 GPAs received gold awards, gold stars. Vice President of Student Affairs Dr. Kahan Sablo said, we really are proud of our students and encourage them to continue their hard work. At the ceremony, former Edinburgh graduate student Fred Hodges spoke to students, encouraging them to continue their hard work. A young man came to me today. He said, hey, Fred, yeah. I want to leave a legacy so that my children's children, children can remember me. Hodges' entire speech can be viewed at a YouTube you channel, you Edinburgh TV. Investing in you is the enabler of self-help. I know Fred Hodges is in the class all by himself. He's going to be the Hodges' 
Hodge's entire speech can be viewed on our YouTube channel, Edinburgh TV. Coming up, the FAFSA deadline is approaching fast, and ETV reporter Sierra Smith sits down with the financial aid director and a water main break that has the residents of Highlands Aid concerned. Stay tuned. You're on your way to meet up with friends, but you can't seem to get anywhere quickly. You don't want your friends to be annoyed, so you text. You're on your way. Five seconds is the average time your eyes are off the road while texting while driving. Make sure you get where you're going. on sex, don't give up on birth control either. There are more methods than you think. Find yours at bedsider.org. On Saturday morning, February 28th, Highlands 8 had a pipe burst and students are feeling the impact. Drew Patrick has more on this story. On Saturday morning, a sprinkler pipe burst on the fourth floor of Highlands 8. Students were displaced to Lawrence Towers for the night while the damage was evaluated. Campus emergency personnel, uh, specifically Lieutenant uh, Krauss of the police department, arrived on the scene and found uh, water coming from um, a sprinkler head on the fourth floor. Um, it's believed that that uh, sprinkler head uh, froze and broke. Uh, the cause, the exact cause of uh, why it uh, froze, um, is being investigated right now, and uh, the, um, the contractors and uh, facilities personnel are. Uh, examining both that sprinkler head and the conditions around it and also um, similar, similarly located uh, sprinkler heads at, at, um, in other Highlands buildings to make sure that um, if there's an issue that, that it's taken care of. Students were given Sunday night from 7 to 11 and Monday from 1 to 4 and 6 to 10 to gather everything they needed to move. Uh, there was damage to um, public areas on all four floors. The water flowed from the fourth floor all the way down to the first um, in the areas of the elevators and um, the lobbies. Um, primarily the damage is in, in terms of uh, water damaged drywall and insulation. Um, the drywall has to be removed and uh, any damaged insulation has to be removed. It all has to be dried out uh, and the, uh, the drywall replaced. The university ruled that all Highlands 8 students would be moved to Dearborn Hall for six to eight weeks. Um, there was a, a period of time after the decision was made where um, we were waiting to see if the elevator would be functioning so that people actually could move their things on Sunday night or whether they would have to wait and start moving today. Uh, fortunately, the, the elevator, which was wet on and, and closed down on, uh, excuse me, was wet and closed on Saturday, um, uh, was able to be restarted on Sunday in, in time to um, have, uh, enable some of the students to move, move out of the residence hall. University officials announced that these students would be compensated the difference of living in the traditional dorms. 
University Foundation committed yesterday, um, right away, and it was in the message that went out to students that um, they would be compensated for the difference between um, the um, suite style housing and uh, traditional housing that they'll be living in for a min minimum of six weeks, uh, even if they get moved back. Our hope, hope is that um, between four and six weeks, they'll be able to move back uh, to Highlands 8. For ETV, I'm Drew Patrick. FAFSA deadlines are just around the corner, and you don't want to miss that important date to get your aid to secure your future. ETV reporter Sierra Smith sat down with the director of financial aid, Alyssa Dobson, to find out everything a student would possibly want to know about the application. Now, a big question is, is there a difference between financial aid for semesters here at Edinburgh and differences for like winter and summer semesters? That is a big question, and unfortunately, it's a complicated question. The simple, fast answer is yes, there is a difference. Generally speaking, you're going to use up most of your financial aid if you are a full-time student in the fall and spring semesters. You can use some of your spring financial aid to cover winter classes if you want to. The best advice if you're looking to do that is to come into the aid office. We can take a look at your spring aid before the winter term begins and help you to see if you have enough to budget to cover the courses that you're interested in. And then for summertime, there's a whole separate application process. I think we'll talk about that a little bit later though. But Generally speaking, you can use any financial aid that you haven't used during the fall, winter, and spring sessions, or also there's some other loan opportunities that you could apply for as well. To see the full interview, head to our YouTube page, and remember, all your applications are due March 15th at the latest. On Friday, February 27th, at the close of Black History Month, the Black Student Union hosted their very first Black Gala. The gala was held in the Pogue Student Center multi-purpose room. The dress code for the gala consisted of all black formal attire. Black student union members from Penn State Barron and Point Park University were invited to the event as well. During the evening, the Black Student Union eBoard gave recognition to students in the organization they felt contributed outstandingly throughout the semester. There was also a poetry reading and special step routine performed by Edinburgh's exclusive step team. In the future, the Black Student Union hopes to make the gala annual. Walk-in Wednesdays are featured at Edinburgh University as a way to give students an opportunity to practice for their future job. Interviews, Ben Jackson has more on the story. Walk-in Wednesdays is a new service provided by the Center for Career Development that allows students to come in every Wednesday without an appointment and receive help from the Center on a first-come, first-served basis. And the reason we started it was because um, we found that it would be a way to be more efficient. A lot of times when students are making appointments, um, you know, we're, we're a small office, so sometimes they can't get in for maybe a week or two, and if they have a class assignment that's due, the next day, which we find a lot, um, then it's not really working for them. And so with Walk-In Wednesdays, um, they can come in last minute and get the services they need, and we are able to see more people during the day that way. The center offers to help students create resumes, cover letters, and portfolios. They help students with job searches and do mock interviews to help show students what will happen in a normal job interview. They also have a career library of over 550 books on topics such as finding a major to how to do a job search. Students who can't find the time to walk in on Wednesdays can simply set up an appointment with the center and still have access to the same services. I thought that the information that the Career Development Center gave me about job searching was really helpful. They opened my eyes to different sources that I didn't know about before. Coming up, we have our weekly weather forecast followed by your global news. Keep watching. Hey! So, same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig.
up on sex, don't give up on birth control either. There are more methods than you think. Find yours at bedsider.org. My parents always said that a bridge is only useful if it can be crossed. At Edinburgh, I found a university that connects who I am to who I want to be. A school that's affordable with excellent professors and nationally recognized undergraduate and graduate programs who give personal attention to my success. Edinburgh is also a place with great traditions and big time school spirit. Edinburgh University, it's the bridge to your destination. Choose excellence, choose Edinburgh. Apply online at edinburgh.edu. I got no pulse, so losing. Shocking kills that run all the time. Just had a few drinks. This can't be happening. Are we clear? Clear. We just buzzed. Just buzzed? You didn't tell us that, sir. You're right. This isn't happening. You'll be fine. Eh, I feel good. Really? No, not really. Buzz driving. Maybe we should stop acting like it's no big deal. Like, what are you talking about? Shocking. Welcome back. I am Jeremy Shrek with your weekly weather forecast. As you can see, we are actually in the low pressure zone right now, so we're actually getting warmer air than we have been. Still cold, so, but we do have this cold front which will be coming through later on in the week, probably around Wednesday night into Thursday. I'll get more into that later. But when we take a look at our temperature map, we actually see that that Arctic air mass is no longer hitting us. So we're actually in the lighter blue area. All the pink is much colder. This lighter blue is all within the 30 to 20s range, 20 to 30s. And when we take a look at tomorrow, or, or today actually, uh, we actually see that we're actually having a lot of clouds. Uh, over us and our temperatures are in like the 30 area <clears throat> and when we take a look at tomorrow during the day we're actually going to get into a lot better temperatures 30s along along with barely any clouds probably going to have maybe chance of shower, uh, snow showers in the morning but <clears throat> Who knows? And when we, when we take a look at Wednesday night, we see that the temperatures are going to get colder. We do have that Arctic air mass in our area. So just be prepared. It'll run into Thursday. So do not put your winter jackets and boots and stuff away quite yet. We're still going to have snow. It's still going to be cold. But hopefully it will actually warm up uh, next week. And when we look at the week ahead, we see that on Wednesday, our high is 32 with a low of 8 later on in the night, which is when that cold air is actually going to get us even more. And on Thursday, it'll be nice and sunny uh, throughout some of the day. We'll have some clouds from here to there, maybe a slight chance of a shower. And as you can see, our temperatures are actually a lot uh, chill, chillier than they than they're going to be on Wednesday, but on Thursday and Friday it's actually going to going to warm start warming up again a little bit uh, into 35 on Saturday with low in 20s on Saturday and 22 with low of 16 on Friday. And that's all we have for today. My name is Jeremy Shrek. Coming up next will be your global news followed by your Fight and Scott Sports Report. get anywhere quickly. You don't want your friends to be annoyed, so you text. You're on your way.
Five seconds is the average time your eyes are off the road while texting while driving. Make sure you get where you're going. So, same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. My parents always said that a bridge is only useful if it can be crossed. At Edinburgh, I found a university that connects who I am to who I want to be. A school that's affordable, with excellent professors and nationally recognized undergraduate and graduate programs who give personal attention to my success. Edinburgh is also a place with great traditions and big-time school spirit. Edinburgh University. It's the bridge to your destination. Choose excellence. Choose Edinburgh. Apply online at edinburgh.edu. Welcome to Global News. I'm Brady Wisp. The families of the ISIS victims have finally responded to the identification of who Jihadi John. Jihadi John is also known as Muhammad Ibn Zawi, a Kuwaiti-born British man. The family of journalist Stephen Zoloff has told Barack Barfi, spokesman for the family, that they hope the American officials catch the criminal, bring him back to America, and convict him for all the crimes he has committed. Mother of journalist James Foley, Diane Foley, has also responded to the crime by saying that she is just saddened by the whole thing and that we just need to end it. So now that the families have reacted to the whole crisis, we are just waiting on what is going to happen next. Now don't you go anywhere because we're coming up next. We have Tyler Trumbauer with your Finance Cast Sports Report. Stay tuned. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. So, same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. Hello, and welcome to this week's Fighting Scott Sports Report. I am Tyler Trumbauer. The women's basketball team kicked off the PSAC playoffs on Saturday by hosting Seton Hill. The Scots came in as a fourth seed. The Griffins were the fifth seed in the PSAC. Despite those matchups usually being close, this one wasn't. Val Majeski opened things up to give Burrow a 2 0 lead. She finished with 11. Seton Hill's Mariah Wells found her way to the bucket here and made it 19 11 Burrow early in the contest. Lauren Hippo made it 24 11 here, 11 minutes left in the first half. Lindsay and Freeland combined for only 18 points, but Edinburgh still won 68 53. That win eliminated. Seton Hill from postseason contention, and Edinburgh will now plunge forward in the PSAC Western Division bracket, and they will head to the quarterfinals on this Tuesday, who they will face IUP as their next opponent, who has gotten the best of Burrow twice this season, most recently by a 91-81 contest in McComb Fieldhouse back on February 14th. The men also qualified for the postseason as a fifth seed in the Western Division, division and visited fourth-seeded Slippery Rock Saturday night. 
Unfortunately, SRU staved off a comeback attempt by Burrow and won by a 64 to 60 score. Edinburgh was within single digits as close as two minutes in the final two minutes in the final contest, but missed free throws in the final 90 seconds of the game, which hampered their come from behind efforts. Edinburgh lost despite out rebounding the Rock 43 to 30. Coming into the game, SRU is a leading rebounding team in college basketball in any division. That loss concludes Edinburgh's season with a 14 and 13 record. The wheelchair basketball season is close to ending, but first, the Scots headed north of the border for a doubleheader with Canadian Academy on Saturday. Canadian Academy, which is Canada's national team, got the best of the fighting Scots in both games. Blake Rush and Mike Adams led the scoring for Bro in game one, and Mike Adams and Isaiah Moore piloted offense the offensive fight in the second game. The two losses moved the team to 14 and 20 overall for its final regular season record. That concludes the regular season for the Scots, who are now off to the NIWBT National Championships, where they will face the University of Missouri. The Zafirovsky Sports and Recreation Dome was busy this weekend, as it was the site for the PSAC Indoor Track and Field Championships. Edinburgh was back hosting the event after not hosting it in the Zafirovsky Sports and Rec Dome last season. And it was a successful one this time for Edinburgh. Casey Jones finished fifth in a 3,000 meter run. She finished, she competed in other events as well. Also Hillary Norris finished fourth in the 60 meter hurdles as the freshman finished with a time of 9.14. To finish things out, Burrow finished second in the 4x8 meter relay with a time of 9.45. To see a complete list of results from the two-day event, head over to GoFightingScots.com. The individuals that qualified will now compete in the Indoor National Championships for the indoor track and field season, which are March 13th and 14th in Birmingham, Alabama. The tennis teams had a busy week weekend as they hosted Lake Superior State on Friday and visited Lemoyne College on Saturday. The men earned two victories on the weekend by identical scores, improving their record to 3-2 and two on the season. The women also swept their matches, improving to 3-1 and one on the year. Both teams will now head south, smart choice, to compete in the Spring Tennis Fest at Hilton Head Island in South Carolina from March 5th through the 15th. That's all we have for this week. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at ETV Sports to stay up to date on all the latest Borough athletic happenings. My parents always said that a bridge is only useful if it can be crossed. At Edinburgh, I found a university that connects who I am to who I want to be. A school that's affordable with excellent professors and nationally recognized undergraduate and graduate programs who give personal attention to my success. Edinburgh is also a place with great traditions and big time school spirit. Edinburgh University, it's the bridge to your destination. Choose excellence, choose Edinburgh. Apply online at edinburgh.edu. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. That's all we have for you this week. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at Borough Television, and email us at edinburghtv at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.